G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. It is time for another mock draft. Now this one will be unique in a sense from every other mock draft I've done. Given that, I'm not gonna do any mock trades in this scenario. I did one a few weeks back was my last mock draft and uh, I think the single biggest criticism of it that people didn't like was the mock trade that I threw in there. Now, as it stands, the trade that I thought was definitely going to happen between Richmond and North Melbourne, um, it may not happen. And I'm really hoping I get this video out to you by the time the deadline hits for pick swaps. Of course, we can still see live trades. But given that Richmond and North Melbourne for a variety of reasons doesn't look like it's the guarantee that it used to be. I'm probably going to eliminate that one. And, and further to that, there's not enough concrete suggestion that there will be other trades. North Melbourne could still trade down, but if they want someone like an Alexander Toru, which is the prevailing rumor at the moment, they can only trade so far down. So with that all being said, I'm going to progress through the top 30 selections in this draft with no live trades. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. So Richmond kick us off, and I still think they're going to take Sam Lawler. There's nothing to suggest this is going to change. I've previously always been under the assumption that they'll have one and two. So will that influence their pick? Are they less likely to go Lawler if there is a choice between Lawler and say a Finn O'Sullivan? I still think they'll probably go Lawler. So let's lock that in. North Melbourne with pick two. I'd imagine probably bid on Levi Ashcroft here. It's a little bit arbitrary predicting where the, the bid is actually going to fall. But given that they bid on Will a couple of years ago, I think they'll keep Brisbane honest and bid on him at pick two. So Levi Ashcroft joins the Brisbane Lions at selection two, which puts North back on the clock. And of course, they might explore some live trade options. If it's not Richmond that they deal with, the other option is probably Melbourne. I suppose the risk for them of trading down at all is if somebody takes Toru instead before that they get back into the draft. So in the scenario, if they trade with Richmond and they enter the draft at what will currently be pick seven. Their biggest threat to losing Toru was probably Melbourne, in my opinion. I think that's who I had taking Toru in the last draft that I did, but it seems very unlikely that Carlton or Adelaide would take him. So is there a potential chance that Melbourne do a deal with North Melbourne? Possibly, but at the moment, it's really hard to see how that would work. So with that all being said, North Melbourne take Toru, who I think is a really good choice for them. He's not a key position forward, which they reportedly need, and they still have their future first to get back into this year's draft if they chose to be aggressive. So that could still happen. And they'll be hoping to get at least a key forward, I reckon, somewhere later in the first round. So in this scenario, Carlton have pick four and they will take Finn O'Sullivan here. I did really consider Sid Draper. That was probably my biggest regret in the last video. I had them take Jagger Smith instead of Sid Draper. And I think that would probably choose Sid Draper instead. However, there is somewhat of a connection between them and Finn O'Sullivan. And a lot of that has just been the connection to Sam Walsh. So I don't know if it's absolutely locked in, but considering he's a chance for pick two and he's the local talent in an evenly rated draft, I've got them taking Finn O'Sullivan, which leaves Adelaide to take Sid Draper. There is a possibility that Adelaide look for a bigger bodied point of difference midfielder in someone like a Harvey Langford. I did consider that, but I think the local talent in an evenly rated draft, and I do think Sid Draper is an absolute jet. I think Adelaide will be happy to take him here. Now we've got Melbourne's first selection, and this one is, this one is tricky. Are they likely to be swayed by the more dynamic Harvey Langford or Josh Smiley or similar, someone with a bit more height? Or do they go for the proven quantity in Jagger Smith? What seems more likely here? I think you can make an argument either way, but I think I'm going to defer to the higher rated talent in Jagger Smith because Melbourne do have two selections here and they can diversify them fairly well. And there's nothing wrong with Jagger as a prospect. He's very high volume, very consistent, very nippy around stoppages. And to be honest, probably is a safer bet than Harvey Langford to be a good footballer. I suppose with just the smaller frame and the, the lack of height and dual positionality, maybe there's an argument for Langford here, but I think I'm going to leave Langford to pick seven for the Richmond Footy Club, who obviously like him. There's been a big connection there. He's played for their VFL team. He's the second cab off the rank in terms of Richmond midfielders. And in this scenario, they hold all of their eight picks, which we'll see in the top 30 of this draft, which gave me a little bit of a headache, but nonetheless, we'll push on. For the last few Phantom drafts I've done, I have just arbitrarily assigned the two bids to St Kilda's pick. Is that subconsciously because of what was said at their best fairest possibly? But it really doesn't matter. So let's just say Leonardo Lombard gets bid here for the Gold Coast Suns, and Essendon receive Isaac Kako at pick nine. Now, in actuality, I think there could be a multitude of ways Essendon can get back in this draft. I've heard suggestions they could trade 28 and 31 out and then trade it back in after the bids come in. They could trade one of their future firsts into this year's draft. And I think that is a live option. But I, like I said, I've left out trade options in this particular video. So now St Kilda have their two picks. And having done a video on them now and, and thought about it, my biggest question around the St Kilda picks is do they go two midfielders or do they go best available midfielder and then go player either with a point of difference or potentially a tall? It has been a link 
to Harry Armstrong. Let's just get Josh Smiley out of the way. I, I do think he does fit St Kilda well. As I said, I did a whole video on St Kilda's two selections and it sort of concluded that Josh Smiley, being the big body that he is, he adds a little bit of grunt to a St Kilda team that has had a lot of outside class and polish lately. So I think he offsets what they have really well. So that's priority one out of the way. Sorry guys, just a quick intrusion to let you know that this video is brought to you in a paid partnership with BetterHelp and they're on a mission to make starting therapy easier. I think there are some misconceptions about the value of therapy. And one of those is you need to have a clinical mental health issue like depression or anxiety before you can seek out therapy. I actually think taking the step of seeking therapy and seeking help is actually a sign of strength and self-awareness and helps prevent problems before they arise. And it does take a bit of courage to acknowledge when you need help and taking steps to improve your mental health. So rather than thinking of therapy as something you use when you've got a diagnosed problem, think of therapy as a tool for personal growth. It helps you understand yourself, you can develop healthier habits. It also provides a safe space to talk. Not everyone in their life has someone that they can go to and express to them what's on their mind. Or perhaps there is someone to talk to, but you don't want to deal with the fear of judgment or perhaps feeling like you're a burden to them. And there's also the fact that you'll actually be getting guided help from an expert, a mental health professional. So as I said, as the paid partner of this video, BetterHelp's mission is to help starting therapy for you easier. Starting the process with them is really easy. All you have to do is fill out a questionnaire. And in most cases, you'll be matched with a therapist within a couple of days. If the therapist that you get doesn't feel like the right fit for you, you can easily switch to another one at no additional cost. They are very careful that the therapists that they get are well qualified and there's also a customer service team if you have any issues. So if you are someone who is struggling and thinks you could benefit from therapy, click the link in the description or go to betterhelp.com forward slash true footy. You get 10% off your first month. By doing that, you would be supporting the channel, but you also get 10% off your first month with BetterHelp. Thanks guys, let's get back to the video. So with our next selection, this one's a bit trickier. There is a few different options here. I think previously I had Toby Trevalia. There has been a bit of a connection to Bo Allen who's expected to go in this range, but I think I'm going to go with Xavier Lindsay to bob up and bolt a little bit into what is effectively pick 11 on the night. This one breaks my heart. He is one that I'm hoping gets to West Coast, but the, I suppose the argument is Sakilda's midfield probably has taken a big hit in terms of depth lately. We've seen Seb Ross get delisted. Brad Crouch is now being delisted, then moved to the rookie list. I think there is a genuine facelift happening there. And I think with these two picks, you can justifiably go another midfielder here. And he is quite different to Josh Smiley. He's a little bit smaller, a little bit more outside capable, really damaging player with polish, and he can play on the inside too. So I think Xavier Lindsay could be a really good fit. I think as a one-two punch, those are two good selections for St. Kilda. Now we've got the Ds and we've got them taking Jagger Smith with the first selection. So probably a midfielder again. Of course there is Harry Armstrong still on the board. They could go for the key forward in Armstrong, but I think I'm going to go for a bit more of a upside based pick and take Bo Allen from Western Australia. I think this guy, first of all, is massively different to Jagger Smith and um, a big athlete. And I mean, physically large. He, he's played his trade as an intercept defender at senior level, pretty contest oriented midfielder, great speed on the outside. I think he's dynamic enough to offset the Jagger Smith selection as two different types of midfielders. So Richmond now double up. So in this scenario, they have Sam Lawler and they have Harvey Langford as two midfielders to start. So this one is probably just a best available selection, but I think he also ticks the box of being different to the other guys they've picked in Toby Travaglia. Travaglia at the moment is a pretty courageous, rugged defender with some really good outside game, takes a game on with ball in hand, provides run and carry. I mean, he probably starts his career as a running defender and then potentially moves into the midfield or plays on the wing. I think this makes so much sense. If Richmond have this selection and he's available at this pick, I think he's too good to pass up. And like I said, offers something positionally that is different to what they already have. So then I have the next pick and I've gone three small players or at least non-key position and potentially all three of them are midfielders. So in the Richmond video, I did say that I expected them to start with a midfield and move to tools with their later selections. However, in this scenario, probably didn't expect Harry Armstrong was still available. Now this comes down to their subjective rating of Harry Armstrong and how much better he is than other tall prospects later in the draft. He is pretty much unanimously considered the best tall forward prospect available. And at pick 14, I think this probably hits the threshold of being good value, value enough to take a tall a little bit earlier than I'd expected to when I started this mock draft. And personally, I think Richmond's tall stocks, both forward and back, or particularly forward, could use some bolstering. So they might not even stop with just the one key forward. In this scenario, they hold eight selections. Now we're at the midpoint of this mock draft and I've got the West Coast Eagles and this might be the one that's gonna cop the most criticism. So if anyone follows my views on the True Eagle YouTube channel, a West Coast Eagles fan channel, the three prospects I've talked about as probably being the most suitable for our selection have been Bo Allen, Toby Trevalia, 
and Xavier Lindsay. In this Armageddon of a scenario, I've unexpectedly had all three taken off the draft pool, um, which sucks. I'm, I'm really hoping for Xavier Lindsay on the night, but Bo Allen, Travalia, probably really unlikely to get there. And the, the talk on Lindsay a little bit is that he has bolted into those top 10 selections. So West Coast is now faced with the awkward position of picking from a talent pool that has some talent. But if you look at the history, I don't think West Coast like to pick from Vic Metro a lot. There's a lot of players here with question marks and West Coast needs probably our midfield focus but I think you have to look at a genuine sacrifice here in that there is a question mark on every prospect so who's available Cooper Hines Murphy Reed Taj Houghton those three I, I do like but two of the three are from Vic Metro Taj Houghton has done an ACL and on talent probably is the right selection but in an even pull you know what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna pick the player that I personally want I'm gonna go Ollie Hannaford here so this one is probably out of left field if anyone's been following my views I've only really mentioned him on true footy recently but been super impressed Impressed with this kid and while he's not a positional need for West Coast I think there's enough midfield ability there where he would still come in and potentially be a good player from day dot I'll, I'll do an another video on the True Eagle channel because I realize I'm talking way longer about West Coast here Port Adelaide into the draft I find them a hard team to select for what do they really need the young midfield's really strong um, talls for sure but I think with this selection they can probably just look at best available and that's probably Murphy Reed here Murphy Reed is a player that I've continually put sort of in the back end of my mock drafts and, and received a little bit of criticism but I will just say that there is a lot of mixed reviews of Murphy Reed as a prospect there is no doubting his performance like he has been a very good player for Vic Metro in the champs and probably is the most talented player available here maybe with the exception with the next guy I'm gonna pick but a small midfielder who hits the scoreboard the only doubt on him is whether he becomes a true midfielder at AFL level but for, for Port Adelaide's needs I think that is still suitable do they really need him to be a primary on baller could he be a rotating midfielder who kicks goals when he's playing in the forward line as you get further into the draft a pick for Murphy Reed becomes increasingly viable I suppose you could say a lot of the selections around this pick have some question marks so Port Adelaide I did consider Joe Berry but I thought I'd mix it up and go Murphy Reed here then we got Fremantle and they take Taj Houghton I am a big fan of Taj Houghton again the only reason he doesn't go earlier in this draft and I heard Toomey say potentially top five and certainly top 10 had he not done an ACL this year but I like him because he's got genuine forward craft he's primarily a forward and then moved into the midfield and started winning plenty of possession I mean Sheasel kind of did that which is not to say that he's the next Harry Sheasel but I just like when players prove that they have forward craft and then move into the midfield and play that role really well and I think Taj Houghton while there is a degree of risk with his ACL pick 17 is not such a high pick that Fremantle will be blowing their future if they don't get this one right I think for where they're at Taj Houghton is a great selection and you know obviously he's probably not going to play in the first half of next year but once he gets his body right I think he's probably pretty AFL ready that might be in 2026 though in this scenario we have GWS taking back-to-back -back selections I don't know how likely that is I think one of them might be targeted by Essendon here um, and in fact the reason Essendon might trade into maybe one of these picks or at least try to is because of the player that I'm going to take for GWS here in Job Shanahan. Shanahan's a slightly undersized key forward but he's very well performed and played well in the VFL uh, I think for Essendon's side hence the connection there. So I've read you know around the place that Essendon really likes Shanahan I don't know how true that is and if so this is a viable trading option for them. He is a New South Welshman despite playing for Bendigo I can't really find any info on how that exactly works. So reduced go home factor for sure here for Shanahan and I think you know position Positionally, with Hogan getting on, I think GWS could look to add a key forward. It probably has been a little while since they've taken one other than Cadman. So we're really talking about a potential one-two punch with Cadman down the line. But they have another selection here. And I still think probably add to that young midfield to support Green and Callahan and Roust. And I think another midfielder here in Cooper Hines, who is a really good selection here for them. He's got really good forward utility as well. Takes marks above his head in a contested situation close to goal. But he's also a very big strong contested midfielder so I think those are two good selections for GWS here I think in my opinion I did consider Joe Berry who I'm going to have next now this might this as I look at it now it feels a little bit late for Joe Berry and I suppose that is pretty much because I've shoehorned Ollie Hannaford into here but I do really like Hannaford so we'll, we'll leave that for now Joe Berry probably would be a massive bargain here for, for the Bulldogs. I think he's absolutely best available. I think he's going to be a good, solid AFL player. I think about need for the Bulldogs. I look at a team that is very well stocked for talls, probably looking to replenish their midfield. Do they really need a small forward? Well, they just delisted Charlie Clark, I think, without playing a game, which implies that there's probably still a need there. Either way, I think from a best case scenario point of view, this is a good selection for the Bulldogs here. They certainly don't need to look at talls, and there's not a whole heap of pure midfielders around. If they did want to go down the proven midfield, 
midfielder route, I'd say Tom Gross probably comes into calculations here. Next up, we have the Richmond Football Club. Now, this one, again, because they've got eight picks, it's hard to balance all of their needs all at once. And this is the part of the draft where proven midfielders are less and less. And I think if they want a Jack Whitlock, this is probably the pick they need to take with Sydney looming right around the corner here. So I'm gonna say Richmond draft Jack Whitlock. Why would they draft two key forwards? Looking at their list, I don't think it's absolutely flush with key forward talent. I don't think there's any real downside to adding two. And he is also over 200 centimeters, which makes him distinctly different to Harry Armstrong. You gotta got think about a pairing of these two types and for a similar age, that actually works. And if they want him, they probably have to take him here. That leaves Sydney to bid on Sam Marshall. Again, arbitrary. Sydney likes to bid on teams. They caused a bit of a ruckus with their bidding in, I think was 2022, wasn't it? So let's just say here, but this is about right on talent for Sam Marshall and, and Brisbane absolutely walk away with a great draft hand here. So then we got Sydney and I have been linking them to Jack Whitlock a lot. I've also seen that connection elsewhere. They probably do need a young keep forward. I'd think that's probably a position of need. Bearing in mind, Sydney consistently don't draft the types of players that I expect. And looking at the comments of Sydney fans, most of them share that view. With that being said, I don't think they need to take a tall forward here, given that Whitlock is off the board. There's still some good options that they can get a little bit later because they hold two selections here. I'm going to go Jesse Totoli, a small forward with a bit of midfield potential, who has bolted up the ranks for being really well performed this year. Sydney's need for a small forward, I mean, I don't think they really need more midfielders. He is probably close to best available talent. This is right in that range. Bearing in mind, it is very even. But I suppose looking to a future where, you know, Tom Papley moves on, they want to have someone able to replace him. And again, if you use the logic with the Bulldogs delisting Charlie Clark, Sydney also spent pick 20 on Jacob Constanti a couple years ago. That to me is the justification enough. They wouldn't turn their nose up on a small forward. So Richmond's back on the clock. So as I said, we've got two midfielders, a running defender in Travaglia who could be a midfielder, two key forwards. Let's go another key forward. No, I'm joking. We'll probably look to the back line here. And I would say this is possibly where I'd put Luke Trainer. Big disclaimer, I don't really know what's gonna happen with Luke Trainer. He's a very hard player to place because there has been some innuendo around some concussion injuries he's currently suffering with. So didn't want to eliminate him. And given that Richmond have so many picks and there's some degree of positional need here, I think on talent, he's too good to pass up at 24. Bearing in mind, if there is a concussion red flag, which I don't know and I don't want to put out there unnecessarily, then maybe he slides further. But for the information that I have right now, I'm going to say Luke Trainer slides a bit, but 24 is a good pick, I still think, on talent. Next, we have the Giants again. So I've given them a key forward in Shanahan, a midfielder in Cooper Hines. Again, GWS tend to pick from their own talent pool, evidenced by nothing better than Phoenix Goddard going at pick 12 last year. With this pick, I've allowed myself to be a little bit creative. I'm not 100% sure how this is going to play out, but I'm going to stick to Vic Country, and I'll say James Barrett. Now, this is a bit of a bolt, but bear in mind, this talent pool is very even. So the idea that clubs will have their own locked-in order and it's not going to vary that much from club to club is probably a little naive. That being said, I could be wrong on James Barrett. I just like him. He's 194-centimeter utility, probably finds his way in the back half, going forward. I mean, I know the Giants have Lee Lear who's struggling to get a game at the moment, but if he leaves or if they expect him to potentially leave, they backfill him with an 18-year-old. So key back positionally, that kind of makes sense. There is a chance he becomes a forward. A little bit undersized at the moment, um, but he's been compared to Tom Barris and Tom Barris was the same height at the same age. Again, that doesn't mean that Barrett here is going to grow that much. We don't know that, but I like this one for GWS. Like I said, I allowed myself to get creative, pick the best fit country boy that fills a bit of a need. Next, we've got the Sydney Swans. And like I said, I, I didn't pick a key forward with the first selection, but I think it's probably a wise choice to pick another one. Bearing in mind, they do have Joel Cochran later in the draft, so I don't know if they need another tall defender. I did think about it, but let's say Jonty Fall. I think Jonty Fall could probably go a little bit earlier than this, but it's just that the teams that needed key forwards took different ones to begin with. So they add a key forward that is about four or five years younger than uh, McDonald or Amati. If those players come good, this pick might look a little bit silly or overkill, but I think there's enough doubt there to suggest that Sydney could use this pick in a, in a draft strong for talls to pick a key position forward, bearing in mind that they will get a key back a little bit later. They also took Patrick Snell last year. So then Richmond finish off with two picks. I'm done with talls. We've picked uh, Luke Trainer. We haven't picked a genuine key back here, but maybe Bolter plays back. I, I don't know. In a, if that's the case, they still have Gibkiss and we've added Trainer. Let's just go best available. So I'll add another midfielder in Tom Gross, probably the best available midfielder. A bit smaller than Lawler and Langford for sure. A pretty clearance focused player. Maybe there are other players that suit this pick a bit better. But like I said, we've taken enough tools and Richmond small forwards seem, you know, to me to, to have a little bit about them. So I don't know if it's a clear need. So we'll just go another midfielder here. And then with their final selection, and I really don't expect them to take eight selections in next year's draft. But, you know, I thought about Alex Dodson as the Ruckman, but I thought, you know, it's enough tools. Let's go Harrison 
Oliver. I do think this might be a little bit early for Oliver, but Richmond probably don't need any more midfielders, and he's a different style defender to someone like a Toby Trevalia. A bit more on the small side, but a very good defender. Boyus is clean as well. I think he's pretty accountable as a small defender. I do think he probably goes a little bit later than this, but this is a case of Richmond probably wanting to diversify all their other picks so far. We've got two selections left. I'm going to go for the Western Bulldogs taking Christian Morea. So from a talent point of view, late pick in the 20s probably makes sense. Do they need him as a player? Like I said, they're still probably padding out their midfield, and I did take a small forward with their first selection. A part of the logic as well is... So they got Riley Sanders last year, and then they added two wingmen in Frazier. I hope I'm saying that right, and Aiden O'Driscoll. And Aiden O'Driscoll sadly retired due to concussion. So does that mean that a wing potential spot is still a position of need? I really just don't know if they need to go tall. I feel like their tall defensive stocks in terms of youth with like James O'Donnell and Jed Buzzlinger mean they don't really need to take a tall back. There's Jordan Croft in there. I'm not sure if he's forward or back. And then their forward line is stacked. So we're talking about smalls really here for the Western Bulldogs. And I think Moraes has a goal-kicking wingman who genuinely hits the scoreboard. Is a, is a good talent selection here for the Western Bulldog. And finally, the West Coast Eagles. I'm going to pick another one that's probably a little bit out of the blue, and I'm going to say Charlie Nichols from South Australia. is a player who's been brought to my attention because there is a suggestion that there's a connection to Dwayne Massey, our head recruiter. Having said that, he's a key position player, 197 centimetres, and, and if he's seen as a key back at the next level, this really is a glaring need for West Coast. Now, in an ideal world, West Coast have multiple selections, not just 12 and 26 in this year's draft. I'm hoping they trade back in. But failing that, with just these two selections it's time to get a key position defender even if it's a little bit early but I don't think it's that early I think it's quite conceivable Charlie Nichols goes in the 30s maybe the early 40s and if so West Coast need to use this pick to get him so that is the way I'm going to round out my top 30 guys but as always let me know in the comments what you think what do you agree with and disagree with chuck in some mock trades I always like reading these and some of you are really creative and get right into the weeds with them and my little brain can't possibly compute by the way there will be more mock drafts I'm going to do another mock draft um, probably two and there'll be one more maybe next week and then one you know a couple of days before the draft so with that all being said thank you for watching guys I'll see you in the next one cheers